tables here is a bit of a mess. But I'm going to see what I can do with this Amiga A1200. I'm going to just start with this. It's a 8 meg memory module, memory board, memory card, whatever the hell you want to call it. I'm going to put on this 8 meg memory card a floating point unit because it's got a spot for it right there let's get one of these out so I have a few here the Motorola 6 triple eight twos oh got one and get a little flat bit around there should match up with the flat bit on here now I have tested this card it works it gave me uh, the 8 meg it's meant to but so I'm going to try it with the floating point unit I'm going to squeeze him on there we've got some jumpers here now because we don't have an Os crystal oscillator there we need to use the one for the CPU that's in here the CPU clock we set the jumper on here for FPU to int you know X int and off so we set it to use the internal clock on the motherboard there we go and that let's go into here I've already removed the screws from this, and so I'd be very careful with that. Let's remove the keyboard. I have replaced the uh, keyboard with the, from the soft membrane to the hard membrane in there for the keys. Though these keys, they were a bit. Uh, they were still weren't working very well, so I had to scrub the conductive rubber that's underneath these keys to get them to work. And I still replaced the membrane with all the contacts on it anyway, but it'll take a while to unscrew and show you all that, but there's no reason to right now. But I can remove the keyboard here. Pop that over there. Note that if you had a membrane one, you'd have to... Be very careful removing that, but because I've replaced it, it's quite easy to remove. Now, getting this into here can be a little difficult. You've got the floppy still in place there. So we're going to remove the floppy eventually anyway, but for right now, I'll show you how the slight difficulty it is to try and get it in while the floppy is still there. It might be a bit easier if I remove this bit off the bottom. I have noticed there's a spare LED here. That might be from uh, somewhere. Okay, we've got a spare LED that seems to have fallen out from somewhere. We'll put that aside because we may need that. I don't know where that came from. I'm guessing from the, uh, the front light. Okay, see that, that now fits in nicely once we remove that bottom panel at the bottom, squeezing it into the, uh, the here can be a little tricky, there we go, so there it is, it's in place, and we can pop this little trap door in the bottom again, the cool thing about this is if you need to change any of these jumpers, you can just take this board off the bottom and get to the jumpers underneath, so if you want to switch it from 8 meg to 4 meg for Say you want to use a certain PCMCIA card, for example. They don't always tend to work if you've got 8 megs of RAM because they share a similar address space, apparently. So you can switch it if you need to do that. But if you're not, just leave it at 8. Why not? So we replaced that with an 8 meg. Well, not replaced. We've upgraded it to an additional 8 megabytes with a floating point unit. I'm going to swap this hard drive. Now, I've not changed a hard drive on a Amiga before, but I do have 
somewhere around here. I've got lots of bits and pieces floating around here. Oh, there we go. I got one of these already uh, pre installed. You can get them online with Workbench 3.1 installed. Hopefully, that works with those ROMs on there. I'm not even sure what, what is on that. <coughs> Dated 1992, 3.039.106. Well, I'll probably pick that up. But we've got a version of Kickstart that is. But let's just plug it in and see what happens. So we've got our adapter here for this compact flash to plug into this IDE adapter, which we'll plug into there. Oops. Take this out. There's nothing really installed on there that I really need to keep. It was full of uh, links to games that were on, I think, someone else's compact flash card that probably plugged in by the PCMCAA or a zip drive or something. And by the time I got this, it had all these links to these games on other directories for some other storage medium that I didn't have. They obviously kept it, probably sold it on or used it for something else. Anyway, that's in place. And now I need to remove this hard drive. So, uh -huh. Ha! By the looks of it, it just comes out like that. We don't need to unscrew the bracket off of here. It just comes off. But we still need to remove these screws from underneath to get the hard drive. Uh, I can just leave the hard drive there and just put that on top. I don't know whether it'll all fit together. But stuff it. I'm going to take the hard drive out. Or no. Do it. Come on, quattro. Oh, not quite. There we go. Do -do 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 -do. Take a note which way around that goes. Oh, okay. That is out. It went that way with the lead coming for that side. Hopefully it matches up because there's no sort of thing to stop you from putting that in the wrong way around if you put it back here. Other than just common sense really. So it was 127 megabytes was that drive. This is, uh, I think it's 4 gigabytes if I remember rightly doesn't actually say on the card or does it and if it did they put a sticker over the top so you can't see it you could try and set one up yourself otherwise you could just get one pre-done and that was just off of ebay oh didn't quite go in there i missed okay got it that's in place put this in place. Now we don't want this any of this circuit shorting out on here. Not that there's much of a circuit there. But well, it's just to be sure insulate it a little in any way you can. Some people probably put a bit of cardboard there or something. I'm just going to put a bit of tape here for now. Okay, that is metal there, I guess, so I might as well, for the sake of the exercise. Oh, that's not quite in place, is it? Is that locked in? That's locked in. Good. Whatever you do, it doesn't matter if you go a bit overboard, just do whatever you can to make sure nothing short, because you regret it much more that you shorted the thing out than the fact that you went a bit overboard with using too much tape. 
it doesn't matter. Like, there, there is no wrong if you're using too much as opposed to too little. Because as long as you don't short the bloody thing, you're rocking. Let's move that off of there. I can always do a better job afterwards. I, I just need to make sure it's going to stay in there. And I'll probably do a little bit more to make sure it doesn't flap around. Bit there like that, perhaps. Uh, flop around a little. Probably put a bit on the other side there too, actually. Don't get too carried away, because in case I need to take it out for any reason. Well, while we're here, might as well put that GoTech here. I do have one around here somewhere. That's not it, that's an actual floppy floppy. I did have a go take around somewhere. There we go. There. Supposedly it was set up for Amiga. I mean, there might be able to use actual floppy disk, but I do have a car, uh, lead here if I want to double it up with a real floppy disk, which is one there, and I found another one. Yeah, let's give it a shot. This bit, it, from this angle, it looks like you've got to try and get like a really funny angle. But no, if you if you lean right over, you'll see there's another screw right down there. Unscrew um, that. It lifts this up like that. Don't lose that screw. Now that we have that off, unplug this. Note that that black little tab is facing down. And then we unplug the power like so. And I'm going to lose that screw. Let's pop it in there. Move that pop here for now. Now, how are we going to attach this to here? And that matches up there. I wonder if we can repurpose this screw somehow. Hmm, might be able to. Yeah, I am probably better off with a self tapper, but uh, let's see how we go here. Uh, Right, I'm unplugging that. Just gotta remember which way around that goes. Oh, it's easy to tell. Okay, let's unplug that. It's gonna make life a lot easier. What I need to do is see if I can sportively screw that screw into there. That hole looks a bit small, but we want it to be a bit small. I, I think we're probably better off with a self tapper, but eh, give it a shot. Nothing to lose. It's either going to work or it's not. I might go in the bigger hole better. Oh, oh, no, look at that. It's, we may not need a self tapper. I think it's still tapping as it is. That looks like it's going to work. Nice. These might actually be. Thick enough. That, I think that ought to do it. Let's see if we can line that up. Now these are soft tappers. Let's see if we can screw that in there. Oh, nice. That should be very much in place. Yeah, so this first screw was, is actually a slightly smaller hole on the actual brackets. The smaller screw there and the thicker screw there fit perfectly. I don't think I'll worry too much about that wobble there because really you're only going to be pressing those buttons here. You're not going to be popping in and out floppy disks so there's really there's no concern there. 
plug this back into here that into there right Let's plug this into there this plug into there and that plugs into here I believe this is the, the, the frame design for it is more for a uh, Amiga 500 fit in there. Better. But for the moment, let's just wedge that in there somehow because we just want to test it for now. Just to show you, I have an adapter here, a VGA adapter. That's a monitor that can handle. 15 kilohertz signal. Let me get that in the slot there. So 15 kilohertz vertical signal, so it'll work with an Amiga without needing a video scaler, which I do have a video scaler. It works just fine. I've tested it on this before. But if I've got a monitor that can just work out of the box, then why not use it? The mouse in there. Now that we do have everything working, let's make it possible so we can read MS-DOS or FAT32 and FAT12 formatted disks or Windows formatted disks. So if we go into here, we need to copy a file from our storages section into our devices section or devices folder. So let's open up the storages folder and we'll see we've got a section there called DOS drivers and we have four drivers in there we can we just want this PC01 for now we can use a PC1 as well the PCO will get us where we need we're going to open the devs folder for devices and we've got a DOS drivers folder in there as well so we open that up We've only got the one driver in there called pipe. So we drag this PCO file into the other DOS drivers folder that we opened from the, the devs section. So we'll pop it in there like that. And that's all we really need. Now if we put in a floppy disk that has been formatted with a FAT or FAT32 file system, we'll be able to view it. I'm going to put one on here. I'll show you how. Now on this computer I have installed the HXC floppy emulator. That can be used to create images of floppy disks that we can put on a USB stick here. So I'm going to pop that into the laptop here and then open up the floppy emulator. Let's run that will create a new image you can create Amiga DOS disk there too but we're going to create a FAT32 we'll go with the default there it says 720k FAT12 that should be fine so we go create disk and it will create a disk in this space it won't look any different but you do need to click that create disk button and then we'll just find a file yeah, such as this shopping list here let's drag that shopping list into there along with this other shopping list there's a couple of shopping lists we'll pop them on there there we go and then we'll choose to save we'll use choose a usb stick there we'll call it disk image three we've got a couple other images on there already i'm going to delete these other ones here on here we've got the disk image we just created in dos format now as we've put the USB stick back in, it's picked up the install disk straight away and it's, it's appeared on the screen. Now I should be able to press the button on the GoTech to switch to the other drive that we've added. Hopefully it reads it. And yes, so it gives us an additional drive that says cross DOS on it. It means it's going to be an MS DOS formatted disk. We open that, 
and there's our two shopping lists to view right here. So that's how we can add compatibility with PC floppy disks. Okay, there is something we didn't check, is to see if the floating point unit is detected. So let's see if we can find out. I'm just going to go in here. There we go, in the show config, it does show it's got a 6882 FPU. So that was successful, and the CPU is the stock 68020, looking good. That worked. The next thing I want to see if I can successfully install it is this clip box parallel port to Ethernet port adapter so I can connect to my local house network through the parallel port thus freeing up the PCM CIA slot if I want to put something else in there other than a network card because I'm not going to use the parallel port for anything so it won't be as fast as probably using the PCM CIA port but it still would be faster than other methods it should be fast enough for what I'm going to use it for we will be needing some files that we'll need to copy across to the Amiga. Plus, we have the GoTech drive for doing that. Well, I'm going to be using the Amy TCP, the final free release, I think this was, which is 30B2. Released, uh, according to this, sometime in 2012. So, hopefully, it'll work with it. Right, yeah, so Google set some steps on how to set up Amy TCP. But prior to that, we need to download the Plipbox files, which, if we go to the GitHub page here, gives you some instructions on how to set up Plipbox. So I just Google search Plipbox. Uh, yep, yep, that's where I downloaded the files for Plipbox. And then if I went down further, I skipped past all the firmware and stuff that needs to be set up because the version that I purchased was one with it already set up. We'll skip down to here. We're going to need to copy the driver folder to start with into the correct location. Moving up. Yeah, common setup. All network stacks are expected. Expecting the Plipbox device driver in devs and networks on your system volume. So let's get the Plipbox program that I downloaded earlier. Drag that into my Plipbox folder there where I've got Amy TCP as well. We're not going to fit it all on the same disk. I'm just going to have a look in here. So we've got an Amiga folder in the Plipbox folder. In there we've got a bin folder and a source folder. So source code in there but we just want the bin folder. And we need the release that matches our CPU, which is a 68020. So there's no 20 file there. There's a 020 device file and a UTP test file. I believe we just need the device, but I'll copy all three of the um, 020 device drivers across. So coming to our program where we can create disk images which I actually have an Atari stuff folder here because I previously set up a GoTech into an Atari Falcon sitting over the other side of the room there. It just happens to be in that folder. So if I go into here, I run the floppy emulator. You can just go skip this bit and go to the browser which is sitting in the other folder, but I'm just going to open that anyway. Amy TCP has some rather long file names and things we need to keep intact. We'll be creating Amiga images that can handle the larger, the longer file names. So we'll fire up this again and we'll create a new image and we'll choose the Amiga 800 880 kilobyte disk. We'll hit create. We'll go into here and we'll start with copying the bin folder to that image. 16. Oh, actually, we'll just put the bin on the one folder there. That'll be fine. Then we'll go save. Choose actually ADF file. We'll leave that there. Um, and we'll call it name 
mttp1 save then we'll create a new disk and we'll copy down to about there okay it's still got plenty of space left so let's copy a heap load, load more down to I reckon to about here we've probably got more space on there to put more but I'm just going to make that disk too so we'll set that to ADF change that to 2 and then we go to create we'll make that 3 and we save that as an ADF close right now we've got all the files we need and so back at our computer here we'll go to uh, the folder we created Amy TCP setup and it shall find the files which are on here somewhere you'll notice when you open a folder especially one that says Amiga DOS and you don't see anything in there you gotta go up here and click on show all files okay that's got PKA zip in there it's an old zip archiver I was just playing with in case we needed it for anything moving along it's not that one must have accidentally double clicked anyway now it's copying so just waiting for it to finish copying there I can see it flashing down on a little light down on the case there it's flicking away copying 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 okay let's copy next let's try and find the next one again we have another bin fight let's go to show all files to make sure we see everything copy these across okay yeah, a little messy in there but that's okay disk there it is one more disk image let's go down to there oh, I meant to go show all files yep two clean up might be enough to run it's enough to run we go to be sure to select intermediate user intermediate user yes proceed with install proceed with install click proceed install for real pretend to install yeah no let's do it proceed now you need to select where you want to install any TCP on your hard drive select directory where you want to install so we're going to need to create a, a drive somewhere now just make sure I've got it there yep still there place that behind place that behind drives let's go to system applications yeah, yeah, yeah okay be sure to create a directory once the directory is created and, and selected just click proceed okay proceed wait while the installer copies some files that does appear to be what it's doing it's easiest if you just install the network device but you can 
deselect the devices you don't need if you don't want. Just click proceed with copy. 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 Click yes. Proceed with copy. Click yes. You want to install the Naps that um, fonts, so click proceed. Proceed. Yep, and then we click proceed. Here's a little bug with the installer. Press enter in this window once and then close it. Enter and then close it. Alright, enter the default username. Here you need to choose a username for the default user. It doesn't matter what you choose, but don't use any spaces and be sure to remember. Okay. User. Proceed. Uh, enter your host name. Anything will do. User Amiga. Oh, come on, G. There we go. Call it whatever you like. It's the name of the computer, basically. Proceed. Enter the domain part of your host name. Anything will do, really. Work. Group. That'll do, doesn't matter does it? Proceed. Will be stored environment host name with an ever found. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, it's asking me to store it. Click store to env arc. There. Give aliases to your computer user amiga dot workgroup one at a time. Aliases are user amiga. There is no need for any more aliases for your host. Just proceed. Good. Now select the SAR device for your network card you previously copied. Clip box. That's exactly what I want. Then click proceed. Select unit number for the network clip box device. Enter zero and click proceed. Unless you got identical cards. No, I don't. So that's fine. Proceed. Enter the IP address for the interface. Must have a unique. Yes. Okay. Let's make sure there's nothing else using this IP address. I'm just going to ping it for the yeah. Ping 192.168.0. Let's try 54. Alright. Three to me. One, nine, two, uh, nine, 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 two, dot, dot, one, six, eight, dot, zero, uh, go back, back, zero, dot, fifty, oh, proceed. Give the destination address for. This part is only needed for P2P slip connections, so you shouldn't need anything. Enter anything? Yeah, I don't think so. Okay, proceed. Make sure no... Oh, yeah, done that. Enter your net mask for your network. Uh, easy one. 255.255.255. Oh, missing a dot. Dot. Two, five, five. Zero. Then we proceed, I assume. Yep, then proceed. Information, this is do, 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 do. Is this correct? It's correct to me. I'll give that a yes. 
If you go no, it, I think it goes back and then you can try again. Let's go yes. So we've already installed the SANA 2 device. We're going to use, so don't select anything, just click proceed. Proceed. Enter the IP address of the default gateway. 192.168.1.1. Right, it's the address of the router, and then we click proceed, oh, 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 that's meant to be an 8, 8, 192.168.0.1, proceed, we don't need to enter any default domain names for host, Proceed. Proceed. Name servers. Okay, let's just put in the Google uh, domain name server. Come on, dot. There's eight dot eight dot eight dot eight. Right. Proceed. Proceed. Do you want TCP, Amy TCP IP to be started at the system startup? Oh yeah, okay, yep, click yes. Do you want installer to make the required changes to the startup script? Go yes, 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 definitely. Now it's open up the script file. If you want, you can read the README first, otherwise close the window. Uh, it's just... Credits and stuff. Freaking spacebar. Right. Now the install is done. You don't need to reboot your computer. You need to do some text editing first. Open a shell and type that. Okay. Right, okay, so it wants us to open the command line, which is down into system shell add oh. <coughs> space. Okay, yes. Mm. Right, use a start. Dash. Is it a capital one? Yeah, it is. Start up. It will do. Okay. Aha. Aha. Find the Amy TCP section in the file and remove the marked parts. I need to remove this whole line here and where it says run there oh damn it this delete key stuff i'm just going to take this lid off of here because it seems to be the keys get a bit stuck but it could be because the lid's not also properly on yeah that's probably that definitely is helping with the keys Okay, remove that line there. Now, can I shift that up a line? No, no. Then we delete that, apparently. Delete line. Oh, there we go. Easy. Right, now, be sure to save the file and then exit. So if we right click, save. Go back to the shell and type in some more stuff. Okay. File, quit. Ed, one D, D. Okay, Ed. Amy, T, C, P. 
be on. Go back. Go there. Right. Bin forward slash start net. Mm-hmm. That looks okay. Let's enter. Okay. Got the right part. Remove the marked parts. Okay. So the first one is on one, two, three, fourth line down. And then we remove this that bit there. Apparently. And then two more lines down. We need to remove all that section there. Like so. Next, moving down. And then add the marked parts. The interface name CNET0 can be whatever you like, as long as it doesn't contain any digits and it's got a number at the end. So we add. What are we at here? Greater than nil, colon, colon, space. And the rest is, then we go down to IP config, or IF config, sorry, L O zero, L O zero. Then we go down to the next. Before the IP address, I think. Yes. I'm going to stick with the CNET zero that they have in the instructions. So I can always look back on the instructions. Yeah, next bit is right down the bottom where we have this run statement there. We need to put another nil here. Okay, go. Right, got it. And then we have a whole other line we need to type down the bottom here, which is Amy T T P in oh there's a colon colon in forward slash log so log in or log on log in forward slash f amiga user make sure to save then exit the editor let's just make sure i haven't made any wacky typos there cnet zero low zero we added all that line in tcp i no yeah all right Yep, that looks good. Let's go here. Save. And then I'll quit. Right, back to here. We have another file to edit, which is Ed Amy T T P. db forward slash enter faces okay got it right otherwise probably would have had an empty file remove the mark parts okay moving down past all these rem statements here i guess there we go to this no no no. Ah, oh, no, I've gone way too far. Oh, it's down here somewhere. Might be down here. 2065 is what they've got in the example here. Yep. So I want us just to remove that bit there. And then we move, remove that bit and then we replace that with C 
net and we put a C net here. No zero to C net. Oh yep, without its number, that's what it says. Secondly, enter the name of the SANA2 device you copied before you started ins the installation. Ah, oh, no, no, it's going to be um, clip box device. I think that's got to be here. Oh yeah, it's in the folder, yeah. Clip box device. Let's just uh, <sighs> system. No, 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 device. It's going to be in device. Let me move that down the back for the moment. Yeah, just make sure I haven't made any mistakes early on. Network. Yep. Clip box device. That's what we need. Now I need to throw these all back to the back. Oh, yeah, you go down the back. You go down the back. 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 I'll bring you forth. You go back. You go back. 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 Right. Clip box device. That's exactly what we need. Alright, good. Make sure to save your file and exit the editor. Save. Right. Quit. Okay. Back, 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 help back, 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 get back, get back. Ah, oh, where's my command line? Ah, oh, there it is. That's what I want. That's where we should be at. Now we have to edit the password. So, add. Oh, fuck it. <coughs> Come on, D. Ah, oh, there we go. I need to clean that key. Okay. Amy. E C E one two uh, D B forward slash D <coughs> D forward slash pass W D The file looks like this before you change it. Fair enough. Add the line, the mark line, the only thing you should make sure is that where you entered work, you should make sure a valid path which exists on your system is entered. Asterisk. One thousand. I'm going to put another one thousand Amiga user. Oh, they put Amiga user. Yeah, because I just put user. Uh, yep. So I'm going to need to read edit one of the other sections. Now I've got the screenshot there, I can see what usernames they're using, so it makes more sense now. Work CLI uh, Save Quit Now I need to edit the start net <laughs> yep. 
Yeah. Get out of here. Not Omega user, he's just user. Mm hmm. Right. If everything is done properly, your Omega should have booted without any problems. Now let's make sure that everything is really is working as it should. Open a shell, type ping and the IP address 192.168. Yeah, okay. Right, okay. So I think they're telling us we need to reboot the computer. So it's lovely. Booted without any problems. Right. Yes, that just fired up straight away. Okay. Let's see if I get the ping command now. Yes, yes. So that is working. Right. Okay. I'm gonna detach this Ethernet lead from here. I'm just gonna pop the pill box out of here so you can see what I'm doing here. I have here the plip box, not pill box. I keep saying pill box, it's plip box. And I have here USB-C. You can either get in USB-C or I think other like a mini USB or micro USB. I, I'm not sure there's other. I decided to go with USB-C. It seems pretty reliable USB-C. And that's the only USB-C device I've got. So we get that. I'm actually powering this from this laptop here, but you can use any sort of power source. And uh, so, uh, let's go uh, get that back in there into the parallel port. Plug this into uh, right. Yep. Plug the USB-C into the pit box. Plug our blue Ethernet lead into the clip box on the other side. Now, here's the big test. Let's fire it up. That's good. Now, let's see if we can ping. I hope we can ping. Right, get back. Nine two dot one six eight eight dot zero dot one. Yes, it's working. We now have the network working. In theory, probably got the intraweb's. Can we control C out of that? Maybe my control key doesn't work so well. Okay, that worked. 35 packets, 2% loss, yeah, that, that's acceptable. I can live with that. Right, okay. Well, I reckon the DNS should be working, which we did set that up, didn't we? Ping. WWW, oh. That's not W's, they're W's. Google. Probably isn't at Google.com. Come on, G. Dot. Home. Go DNS, yes! Okay, go. Right. If you get replies, everything is working, yay. What I want to do next is, well, two things would be handy. A web browser and an FTP client. I'm just going to turn that off for the moment. As I've got the internet working on here now, I've also set up an FTP program. I was able to FTP into an FTP server I have in the other room over there. Oh, the next box. I'll show you how I did that, but right now I'm just going to try and fix up some of the keys on the keyboard. So I've got to remove all these screws. I did earlier today, but I didn't do good enough a uh, good enough jobs. I'll just get the rest of this off and then clean up some of those other keys. 
Okay, so I've removed the rest of the screws off. Oh, I've actually left one screw be two screws behind. Hang on, let's get these last screw two screws off. Because there's lots of screws on this thing. Keyboards usually do have lots of screws underneath. As necessary. Okay, that's all the screws now. Yep. In the keyboard, you have that's the key, the keys. There's the keys, and you usually get a flimsy membrane, but I've replaced it with this solid membrane. The keys cross the pads. Say if you press the key or not. You know, basic. Design in that way at that point, anyway. So, I usually get just some paper towel with a bit of, bit of um, texture on there. I mean, there, there is a really good YouTube video of someone showing how to do this properly. This isn't properly, this is just a rough fix. So, I usually go through, clean up the pads like that. The moment there's not too much grit would appear on here you'll get more grit on the actual keys you have these black bits at the bottom which are like conductive rubber that crosses the pins now the D key was here so that one was bugging me the most I, when I wiped it, I probably concentrated more in the middle, except instead of the two side bits. And you'll notice when you rub it with the paper, you get some black crap on there. That's probably a good thing. Try not to break it when you do. Find an angle where you can do it without destroying it. Yeah, so there's a bit of blackness going on there, and that, that's good. Now another key that was getting to me was Q. Yep, that's good. Now let's do that D again. Because that was really getting to me. And it's probably good now. I mean, that's, you can see the grit collected on there. The control key over here, yes, that was not doing so well. Yeah, you can go over all the keys again. Doesn't hurt. Just, you know, don't get too rough. Just, if you bust one, you're going to have to try and replace it somehow. And best not to go down that path if you can you can help it though I might actually look into replacing this whole thing or if I can't get the little I think, I think that you can actually get replacement rubber bits but I'm not entirely sure of that don't quote me on that one as a definite there may have been in the past I saw there was a development with uh, replacing the keyboard with a mechanical keyboard. Pretty much just replaces the whole keyboard and comes in either black or original colour keys. And that might have been cherry style uh, key switches. Okay, I've gone over the rest of the keys and that will do, that's just what I do for a bit of a quick fix on the keys. Make sure that's sitting in place once you get the screws in there. Yeah, that's probably the other thing too. You want this to really match up in the right place when you put this bit back on. Where's the space bar? Okay. Yep, so it goes that way. 
that's in place. And now we're going to put all these screws. There's like lots of screws from one end to the other because it needs to be dead flat for when you press the keys, obviously. So I'll get started on putting these screws in. from one end and then the other and keep going back and forth and in the middle and so forth okay I'm just down to the last screws now last two screws and then plug the keyboard back in make sure everything's still working there's a hole yep okay that's the last screw. Keep it on there. This should slot back into the uh, where it's meant to go over here. Just slots down. Okay. Hey, let's turn it on. Move that over there. Let's see if the keys work any better. There we go. So if I go to here, then I'll open up the command shell. Oh, now the D works perfectly. Q there. The A is a little sticky, but it's 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 usable. I'm not going to pull it apart again just for that little thing. Okay. That's good. What I did to get the FTP working is first, I actually, um, oh yeah, so a bit of paper that I was using to clean the keys. You can see all the black gunk on there. You probably can't see in the camera in this light, but you can see it's like a very faint blackness so in here I had put on this stick in the Amiga DOS format I had moved over to here a file extractor for LHA because pretty much anything you download or Amiga from the internet usually tends to be in an LHA file so I downloaded into this folder here and now note you won't see things in a lot of folders that are there unless you go to the top menu bar and then find the all files option and there it is there and when I run this LHA run file it extracts a number of other files so if I go clean up here, we'll see more of the files um, based for different systems. This system, being a, an Amiga A1200, has the stock uh, 68020 CPU, which we can use this version of the file for extracting other files we, we can download off the internet. Then you need to work out where you're going to put it so you can use that command from any folder. If you go into system here, and again like the other folders, there are other folders hidden until you click on show all files. And you'll see there's a folder here called C. Now anything in C are commands that you can type in from the command line from any directory. So I copied it into here, that, that other uh, file, so I copied that file into here to there, and then I renamed it as simply LHA. The program I used for FTP is AMYFTP. 
I copied that to here into this downloads folder that I created much earlier along with all the other things I've been copying to this computer made a folder called Amy FTP setup now if I go in there I also had added a couple of other programs that are needed to run Amy FTP so first thing I did was actually install Amy FTP to see what errors I got when I tried to run it if any and yes I did and I had to work out which programs I needed so it was much googling but there's the program here by itself so you have to note where it's, where it's saved so in the file system it's under work and then it's in downloads and then it's in Amy FTP setup so I'll need the command line in order to use LHA because it's a command line utility you can probably find some GUI program where you can do it on the screen but I just did it from the command line for now so I open up the command shell now you'll find there's commands here that are very very similar to DOS at, for what we need so if you're familiar with DOS and a lot of those commands are also under bash as well on, on Linux and Unix etc like the CD command so first just like with DOS where if you want to change the drive or partition you can just put where you put like C colon or D colon like if you wanted to go to if you wanted to go to your CD drive or something that's on E you just put E colon and then you press enter on Windows you would do that or DOS but on here we want to go into work now work is marked here with an icon that looks like a floppy disk representing that it's it's a drive, it's classed as a drive, it's a mounted drive. So we type in work, just as it says there, work. God, there we go. Put the colon at the end, just as you would in DOS changing directories. And you press enter, and now you're in the work folder. And then you do the CD, just as you would in more than one operating system that uses CD and then you want to go well actually you just do DIR and you can see the folders that are there which are indeed there you can't see the other you'll see there's th three files there well two folders and one file that's because you need to show all files and we've got two there and there's a info file that's obviously for the operating system itself just as Windows tends to put a hidden file called desktop.ini that has information on how that folder was set up last time so the next time you go in it should be similar in theory anyway we want to go into the downloads folder so we go cd downloads as you would and inside the downloads is where we've got our Amy FTP setup which we'll see here sorry for anyone who's already familiar with all this there'll be those who aren't who might be watching this and may struggle at first we want to go into the Amy FTP setup folder I mean it's pretty easy to look online what the basic commands are for using the what the commands are for using on the command line to get yourself around the folders. Um, up, set up. Then there may even be some sort of function that will open up the shell directly in the folder. Maybe there's an additional program you can get. I haven't looked into it. I didn't really care. But there may be those who do, so they can do that. So we're in the folder. Now, I did Google up what the, the LHA command would be, but anyway, because we've put the LHA in the C folder on the system uh, drive, if we go LHA, it should work from any folder. So if I go LHA-L, it's going to list a whole lot of commands of what you can do. The only commands you're going to need 
for this is LHA. Actually, let's do a DIR so we can see what's in the directory. We can see it up there anyway, it doesn't matter. LHA. There it is there. That's our list of files. And if we go into here, we can see all those files there as well. But the one we're concerned about is this one, which we see right here. And now I want to extract that. Now here's here's the clever bit. You may not want to extract it and have lots and lots of files just flooding everywhere. You have a RAM disk up here and you can extract it into there, have all the files there, run the setup in there without having lots of files everywhere, which I I did some of that and some of it I did actually extract into here and some of it I didn't. So, so to extract the file, you yeah, LHA, oh, select the right window, LHA X, and then you're going to type in the file name, Amy F FTP dash one dot eight four three dot LHA, and then we want we can put it into the RAM folder. So we can just go RAM that. So we telling it to go into the RAM drive. Now if we press out enter, there it goes, it's extracting. As mentioned, you could probably find a nice GUI that will do it all for you if you prefer. Let's put it in there, and you'll find in here an install application. Before installing it, I actually picked a folder on my system drive where I wanted to put it. So I wanted to put it in the applications folder I created. So I created a folder called Amy FTP, which is in there and I can just run it from there. Now, when I ran it, it would come up with some errors. So I had to try to work out what it needed. So it needed two other programs before I get to that when you install it it'll ask which folder you want to uh, install it to so you make sure you choose that particular folder that we just I just showed you in the applications folder here that you created so you go in there you create that and then when you run the installer on the RAM drive the install there it'll ask it where you're going to put it Choose that particular folder on that drive and then just proceed next, 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 or proceed, 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 whatever. You don't need to change any other settings, it's the only one. In fact, I'll run it now, so it'll probably uh, show me the option. If I go proceed, and I go proceed, proceed, here. Where do you wish to install it? So. You would go show drives, system, just in the system folder, go to applications, not, oh, wrong one. If it's the wrong one, just do it again. Go system, applications, FTP, and then you click proceed, and just proceed all the way, don't change anything else, and then it'll be done. But I'm going to abort this installation because it's already installed. When you run it, because it'll pop it into the folder, it'll pop it into, you close all that. We'll open up the system folder here, go into there, go into there, and there it is there. So when you go to run it without installing some other necessary uh, programs, libraries it will fail so in order to get it to work in that same folder so go in here and I go dir we have class act 2 demo and class act 33 did some googling found where to download them and did the same for them I just went LHA Class 
Act to demo dot L H A. Oh, you put the X. Make sure you get the X. But there is something else I did. What I did though is something I probably shouldn't normally do, but I did it anyway. Is I ran them both and they ended up pretty much copying over the same folder. So I went like that, ran that, extracted all those files into that folder. It's got a lot of files. As you can see, <laughs> goes on for a while. The other one, we extract the other one that's not as long. I th think it may just add some extra files to it. So it didn't run anywhere near as long the other one. So then I went DIR and I went LH. Well, if you press the up arrow, it will give you previous commands like that. Same as you would in both DOS and Bash on uh, Linux, like Xterm. At 33, and I just did that, uh, just installed over the top of the other one, probably added some extra files. So I went like that. I might only need one, one of them, I don't know, but it doesn't go as long as the other one. So then I went into the RAM, and it only created this one folder, actually. There was this in here, but I didn't really do much about that. Uh, actually... Yeah, no. So I didn't really do anything about that one. But I did go into here, and then I ran that, and I did not change any settings when I ran it. I just click proceed, next, 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 or proceed, 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 proceed. Any questions it had, I just ignored it and just kept proceeding. Just agreed with anything it wanted. Then, I ran the FTP client again, Amy FTP there, and then I had another error. There was something else I still needed. And what that is, I find it was request tool. And it said something about rec tool uh, dot library, rec tools dot library. So I, I found that online. It was, oh, what was the name of the file? I'll tell you the name of the file. Yep, it was request tools uhr dot lha because it's a, LHA archive and then I found that downloaded that put it on a USB here and then copied that across popped it into this folder called rec tool setup did exactly the same there again but I needed to change folders if you want to go back a folder you just go if I want to go back to downloads because some I'm in downloads Amy FTP at the moment so it's CD and a forward slash I went back a folder to downloads and I went CD rec tools USR. Oh no, sorry, rec tools setup is the name of the folder. So I was in there, DIR, and then again LHA. So I did exactly the same thing and then extracted that into the RAM folder, ran the setup, rebooted the computer. And it worked. So I went rec tools USR dot LHA. Oh, I need the X. Yeah, LHA X rec tools US, USR dot LHA. And then I went RAM. Once you go in the RAM folder, you can move it wherever you want if you want to back up of it. Let it do its thing. I think this was quite a big program, actually. I don't know. 
it's only that big. Went into here, there's rec tools there. I ran this setup here. I made no decisions other than click proceed all the way. Just proceed, 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 proceed. That was it. Didn't make any changes. Just let it do its thing. And then I turned the computer off, turned the computer on again, went into my system drive and my applications folder. This application's not there by default, I created applications folder there just for somewhere where I can find things again without things getting too messy. Went into my Amy FTP, ran that, and then it worked. I finally got to the main window. And then from here, I added details for my FTP server sitting in the other room. So I went connect. Created. If you click new site, it's exactly the same as what you'll see when you click on edit, if you click on one you've already created. So I've created one there called Ubuntu One. If I click on edit, that's exactly the same window you would see if you were typing it in, if you clicked on new site. In which case you put the name at the top. You, I put the IP address of the computer in the other room. Don't have to change the port. Put username, password. Uh, it says operating system Unix, which it is a Unix like OS on the other room. I mean, you can probably change it to all the options here. You've got VMS, DOS, and Unix. So I left it at Unix. And that's it. I took it off anonymous so I could put username and password, but you do, you can make it anonymous if you like. If your FTP server supports anonymous, you go OK. Now, adds it to the list. I click connect. It's connecting. It's attempting to connect. It's quite possible that I'll need to restart the computer. I have found with the flip box that turning off the computer it need to un unplug the power to the flip box as well to reset that too quite often because it's got a an Arduino on it running its own little program and you might need to reset that as well because this is taking far too long so I'll abort that and we shall do exactly that because I reckon if we try to ping Use a standard ping command, so if I go ping 192.168.0.7, which is that server, ping's not working. We'll need to restart the Arduino board, but I'm going to restart everything. Oh, look at that. Key, keys work straight away. So, so we unplug the USB-C connector here, off the Arduino, plug that back in. Turn that back on, the Arduino, or the flip box, whatever you want to call it, the one in the same at the moment. So now we're back, I go into system, go to my applications folder, go into FTP, run the FTP program, go to connect to, my setting is still in the list, let's go connect. Now, even though you would have put the password in when you set up the uh, connection, I still want you to put the password in every time. Because that's just the way it rolls. There we go. We are now FTP'd into the computer in the other room. I've got a little file browser here. I don't know if we can make it any bigger. Oh yeah. And then I can go through here I can go into the downloads folder on that computer. Just double click. Um, it's taken a while to open. I've got a lot in there though. Yep, here we go. And then I'll see if I can download something. Let's download a just a random file. Let's download this TOS ROM. So a ROM chip for an Atari ST TOS version 1.04, the UK edition. We'll just download that for just for the sake of downloading something. It's, you've got a get button here. Before you click on it though, you've got local draw. 
If you don't choose the right place to download it to, it seems to download somewhere, I've got no idea where. Or it goes through the process and you never find the file. So before you do that, you go local draw, you got a little file icon here, or folder icon. Click on that, it's going to ask you where to put it. If you click on volumes, it'll give you all your disk drives. You can make, might want to put in the RAM drive, or maybe you want to put it in your downloads folder, like work downloads. So you know, like work over here, and you get your downloads folder in there, so it'll go into here. If we have a look in there, there's a there's MU TOS. That's another Atari TOS ROM. But we'll put it in here with that. Actually, I'll leave that open. We can have a look after. So we go back to, yeah, pop that out the way, put that out the way. So it's going to download it into here. And we go, okay. And then we go, get. And here it is, downloading the file to this computer from the FTP server. And that will save you a hell of a lot of trouble trying to get really large files onto the hard drive on here by downloading it on another computer and then just going here and downloading files of whatever size. And we can exit that. And we can have a look in our downloads folder, get all that off the screen. Downloads. Show all files. And we should see it in here. I don't see it in here. Oh no, there it is. There it is. Sometimes it could go out in again. Maybe it was right there in front of me. TOS104UK.zip. So, yep, the file is downloaded. Next thing I want to try is installing a web browser. I'll go through the process of trying to work that out with you. So we're going to see if we can install a version of NetSurf that will work on this particular version of, of Amigo OS. It's from a number of years ago because later versions seem to all work on version 4. So that's not going to really work on this. Let's go to now FTP program again because I've downloaded a copy onto my FTP server. There are some additional programs you can install to work with NetSurf. Though I haven't downloaded all those. Having some internet troubles at the moment. It's a lot of downloads aren't completing due to poor connection. So I'm not going to wait for the others. I'm just going to download NetSurf itself because it should be able to run without those other things and there is one thing we do need though and I believe I had downloaded so I'll just go to the folder here make sure I've downloaded that other program that worked with NetSurf otherwise we'll go get it NetSurf LHA. Yeah, that's it. Just see if that other program is there. Nope. So we'll, we'll get that anyway. So let's go and get. Oh, no, we're going to make sure we pop it into the right folder. So go volumes. I'll put in more work. Downloads. Yeah, you can go into there. And from there, we can move it anywhere else we want. So. That's a good place to put it for now. So let's get that file. And that's downloading. We'll let that proceed and I'll just check that other file is downloaded. Okay, so we're going to download the other program we need. Hopefully that did download. Okay, actually I'll get this one on the second attempt and 
that seem to come down in one go. So we'll get that, make sure that also goes to our downloads folder that we made earlier. So let's go, okay, there it is, mui38usr.lha, sorry. That's the one to get, so we get that. The system requirements didn't say it needed that. Close all that, go into here, downloads. View files, all the rest of the files. There's NetSurf, there's the MUI program. I'm going to rename the MUI program because I do have uh, a bracket one bracket because I did download two copies. Let's fix that, it's only got the one. I'm going to create a folder called call it NetSurf setup. any point we may find that we need something else installed to get NetSurf running. It is meant to be a version that is meant to work on this OS. It might be uh, terribly slow to run on this system. But if we can at least get to the point where we can actually browse to a page and download a file, then it would be possibly of some use. So let's open up our command line. Let's go here, there, 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 system. All right, let's close all these other windows. This is too much open now. And we'll go to our work drive. Here they are. All right, CD. Oh. CD downloads, DIR, see what's in the folder. Now, oh, where is it? There it is, NetSurf setup. So we CD into NetSurf setup, where we place the files in, and then we go DIR. Now we'll start with the MUI 38 USR, because that is a prerequisite. So L H A. Hopefully the version of it is going to work. It's this version of NetSurf. Dot L H A. Oh, I forgot the X. I always forget the X. So L H A X M U I thirty eight U S R. Dot L H A. We'll put it into the RAM folder. Uh, RAM drive. Right. There we go. Extracting away, still extracting away. There's quite a lot there, isn't there? Let's move that around a bit so you can watch that stream up the screen. Oh, there we go. Done. So that's in our RAM drive. We might as well have a look there. I don't think we need to copy it anywhere else because it's got an installer here, it's going to install elsewhere. There is a readme here. Uh, graphical user interface for programmers to point a few using MUI saves a lot of time. Alright, so it's like a an additional graphic library for programmers. Let's install it. We'll proceed with the install. Yeah, we'll go with the defaults. Please select the place for MUI package. A draw called MUI will be created there. The minimum space required is about 500 kilobytes to complete the installation. I'm actually going to relocate that to somewhere other than work. I'm going to put it in this applications and it's going to create its own folder called MUI apparently so I don't need to create a folder and let's proceed yes yep proceed and that's good select the images you wish to install yeah just put the whole lot on there there's space four gigabyte drive 
three, three and a half, because workbench is, oh no, not, not that fought partition, that's right, that partition's only 500 meg, still plenty there. Yeah, we'll just choose the language of English there by default, that'll do. Yeah, put that on there. Yeah, let's put everything there. Now I think that was more for the programmers to use, but supposedly we had to install it. The next thing we need to extract DIR is NetSurf itself. So let's extract so we've got LHA dash X net surf dash M sixty eight K into the RAM drive. Yep, so as I mentioned it's a much earlier version. If you try to get the latest version it's not going to work. It needs much newer OS and system basically. Extract that into the RAM drive. Now we'll see if there's an installer. Oh operation not entirely successful. We have a corrupted file. As I mentioned a lot I did have some trouble downloading. I might actually go and download the file again. I'll just see if there was another copy that I had downloaded. If not, I'll go try and download it again. Logging back to my FTP server. Go to downloads. Do 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 do. Which will get there in all good time. In the fullness of time. L M N. No, I only downloaded the one. So I'm going to re-download it. Just in case. There. Yeah. Just, just in case. That one I've got it from was corrupted. I don't think it got corrupted from copying it from my Linux box to here. I think it's more the problems I was having with downloading. So I'll be back shortly. Well, it turned out the website I was trying to download it from, it's having too much difficulty at the moment. But I found where I can download it slightly newer versions. I've got it that instead. So let's grab that. So I've got that on my FTP server. So we'll connect to there. It requires another different dependency, but so I've got that as well. I'll get it to download to just to the downloads folder and then I can use it to replace files in the other folder. Find the files. I can find the folder. Not downloads. Loading, loading, loading. Okay, now JKLM and that one. See if it'll let us do two at once. Supposedly there's a way. Anyway, which one we got? The SSL uh, component. Amy SSL. Yeah, we need that. So that's five meg. Nearly, nearly six meg. Which is the whole benefit of our FTP setup here. Being able to transfer large files so easily. Okay, one down, one to go. Yep, get that. 
so it's about somewhere between two to three meg. There's less than three, but no, close to three. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right, okay. So we'll exit that and that. Um, yeah, that too. And that. Let's close all that. Did our RAM disk. Let's sort of see if there's anything there we need to delete. That's the NetSurf that became corrupted when we tried to extract it. I'm just going to delete that. Delete. Yeah. Close the RAM disk for now. And we'll go copy. Okay, we need to view show files. Yeah, okay. Let's close the window, open it again. Hmm. files don't have a refresh button do we redraw all no. Okay, let's close. Close it all. Let's, and we'll go back to here. Downloads. Okay, get some files down there. Netsurf setup. Let's go show all files. Right, there they are. They are there, just haven't updated, that's all. More of a mega glitch than anything else. Move that into here. That's the newer version. Where's the other file? There it is. I can go in there too. I'm going to rename them because I don't need those numbers in brackets I think there might even be a newer version of that I'm not sure whether that's the latest one Okay, bring this forward. DR. Yeah, so we're gonna take that out. Let's now oh, we wanna do the 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 Amy SSL first. So yeah, Amy SSL dash four point one. No, something's wrong. 4.12. That's better. Do 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 Mmm. It's quite large. Well, it was, you know, well over 5 meg. Mmm. Still going. Ram disk full. Yeah. See, I had a feeling I was starting to worry because it's so, so large. Okay, we're going to get it to extract somewhere else. Let's make a folder in this 
NetSurf setup folder called SSL. I just knew we were starting to push it. Amy SSL. Right. So we should be able to change that to work. Ah. Uh, hey. Thanks. Downloads. Net surf set up. That's meant to have a colon there. Eh? Give that a capital W. Capital W. <laughs> capital W. Downloads. Set up Amy SSL. Let's see if that is going to work. Operation fail. No, don't. File on me now. Let's try that again. Extracting files from archive. No files extracted. Operation successful. Well, that was a complete waste of downloads. Net surf setup. Any SSL. Let's try it again. <sighs> I'm going to restart this computer. It's getting. <sighs> Strange RAM disk getting full seems to have had some unexpected effect. Maybe downloads goes in. Net surf setup. Our files. All right. the internet surf setup yeah. then we want to L H A X net surf underscore O S three dot L H A into where we want it work. Slash demo slash net surf set up slash Amy SSL. I'm missing an F. Yeah, net surf set up. Let's try that. Yeah, no, we want the SSL. Let's do the SSL. Let's not do the that one. Amy SSL 4.12. Make sure the four's there. I hope it starts. Why isn't it extracting? I don't know why it's not extracting. I'm going to delete that file because. Previously, it was extracting like in. Extremely productive manner.
that into here into our net so folder and I'll rename that two there and we'll go to our command line start with the fresh command shell Make our way to here. Work. So into the work directory and then into the download folder. Then we'll go into the Surf setup folder. CD into there. And then we'll uh, do the extraction. L H A X What I may do actually is I might just make another folder in there called temp and I'll extract it into there so I don't have to type such a long folder name and I can move it afterwards. Go okay, here, yeah, new draw, call this temp. Like so, yep, yeah, I can go in there and we'll go work temp. Do need that four there. Ah, oh, yeah. Okay, the four is a little sticky. I'll uh, make sure that matches up with this file name here or here. Yeah, that looks good. And let's give that a shot. No, that. Let's try that. That's better. Okay, so you need to splash at the end of the folder name, the temp, and now it's extracted. Okay, FTP timeout error. That's fine. Now this is quite a big program, so it'll take a while. It looks like all the source code in a particular folder there called developer or it could be code used for integrating or something for other software developers all right it's done let's have a look yep okay and then we've got the install. Alright. Good. And the other thing we want to extract is NetSurf. So we'll extract that as well. I don't know how big that is and if it'll be too big for the RAM disk. So we may as well make use of our temp folder. And we can just delete things from there afterwards to save space. netsurf underscore zero three dot lha so 
we'll just uh, right here. Make sure it's there as well. Yeah, it should be there. We'll just get it out by here. Be net surf. S3 LHA with the temp folder. Right. So let's control C. Said the folder already exists. It might be copying over the uh, folder already out there for some reason. Okay, let's create another folder in the temp. Then. Called uh, net surf, not surf, net surf. Okay, okay. So we create another folder in there called net surf. And we can move that out the way. And we'll go to here, net, like that. Then we'll see if it extracts without saying it's going to write over it anything. Yeah, good. Do, 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 do. Okay, that's finished. And we'll go have a look in the folder. We've got. Let me close all these other windows here. And we can go into here. Into temp. We'll start with Amy SSL. Install so Amiga OS 3.x in our case. Proceed. I want to create a directory. I'm going to create a folder. You can actually make a new folder here. So I'm going to so drives, let's put it in the system. Yeah, sorry. So drives, go to the system, applications. Where I've been putting things, make you draw. Create icon for draw. It's a complete path of new directory. Okay. We'll call it Amy. SSL, oh. Amy, SSL. So it's in the system folder, applications forward slash Amy SSL. It'll create a new directory there. So that's where it's going to go. And I click proceed. So we've got 68,020, 30, 40, 80 or more files. So that, yeah, okay, we want the top one. We don't have a 68060 or Amethlon. Right, so we want the top one. I'll let that copy. Yes, we would like it added to the path. Thank you very much. To assign added to user startup. Yep, proceed. A reboot for modifications to take effect. Okay, so we need a reboot for those changes to take effect. Proceed. So before we install NetSurf there, it may require some of those things already taking place during the install. So I'm going to do a restart. Make sure nothing else is open there. No. Okay, let's do a restart. Now, go here, temp, net surf. We have an install option here. I'll no doubt have to create a new folder for that too. 
have to decide which drive I'm going to put this on. This archive is for Amiga OS 3.5 or 3.9 only. Ah, okay. We seem to need the earlier version I was trying to get that had the corrupted file. Let's download another copy that I've downloaded. Go to here. Connect. There's my zip file, which I'm going to put into that temporary folder there. There's somewhere to put it. Get. Okay, I'll let that run. Did we get the whole file or not? So we have the file there. Let's see if we can unzip it. I'm actually going to cheat instead of using the command line. I'll just um, go to my downloads. I, I did have a copy of unzip sitting around here somewhere. Unzip here. Yeah. We don't want PKA zip because it's too old. So we're going to here. zip file there, we can make a copy of that by putting it into there. Ah, let me just go copy. Let me go here. Ah, there's copy there. Okay, let's pop that in there. Now, if we bring Get all that stuff to the back. Go here. Put that. To Run that. It's gonna ask. Let me go. Net surf dash m sixty sixty eight k dot zip. There we go. And if we're lucky, popping it into the same folder. Big file, might take a while. We'll just let that run. So it's still extracting, I think. Not entirely sure. If I remember rightly, this tends to get to the end and then just stops there. I think. Let's see what happens. I have in this folder a copy of unzip. 
which I've uh, downloaded and just added here. And in here, let's make sure, yep, show all files. Uh, in the system folder in C, I have copied just that one file. T U unzip right there. So yeah, I've copied that one file into there. So now we'll have the unzip command. So what I want to do is as we have copied the netsurf file into here Yep, as we have copied the file into here, as we have uh, downloaded the NetSurf file into this folder here, which was in temp NetSurf, I'm going to create another folder in there called Extract. It's getting a little messy, but we'll probably end up deleting all the. Uh, stuff we don't need afterwards anyway. While that's there, we want the command line. So go to the work folder. Uh, CD temp uh, uh, CD net surf. There's our zip file. So you want unzip net surf dash m sixty eight k dot zip and we want dash d d tells it which directory to extract to which is work come on downloads not download, sorry, my mistake. Work colon temp net net surf extracted. Uh, there, we want it to extract into that folder, otherwise, it'll extract somewhere else. I don't know if it extracts into, the, into there or anything. No, nothing in there. So it will extract into that folder there. So that's what we want. Providing I've got the file name extracted right. I didn't make a typo or anything. Anyway, let's press enter. See what happens. Right, it's doing it. Well, that's extracted. Uh, so we should see that in the folder. So let's just go DIR DIR extracted. Try that again. What? Huh? Ah, oh, making typos. DIR extracted. Well, let's put that folder in there. Let's just go have a look at that folder. We don't need this anymore. There's that. And here, extracted. There. NetSurf. Right. Now. 
I seem to have NetSurf and NetSurf AGA. This is uh, an Amiga A1200, so we do have AGA. So do I run this one, I guess? Hard drive still flicking away. Oh, wow. Oh, that was exciting. <laughs> I got so far and then, uh, let's, uh, suspend that, I guess. Now what do we do? <clears throat> I probably should have went the reboot option. Right, I don't know how to get out of this. Nothing's responding to anything. So I'm just going to restart that and we'll try the version that is doesn't say AGA. <laughs> Mm. Temp. Try it. Ah. Uh, uh, okay. Did it do anything? No. Yeah. Ooh. No available video device, unable to initialize frame buffer, couldn't open cyber graphics. I'm guessing that didn't work. Maybe there's some sort of uh, configuration we can do. So we've got NetSurf, but doesn't seem to play very well. Well, I think that failed. I was after just a simple web browser and it's... Not really done what I wanted to do. Now it's got a blank screen. Oh, fuck. Turn it off. And now, appears to be having trouble. Yeah, that didn't quite go as I'd hoped. So we couldn't get a web browser running. There may be other options. But that, sadly, hasn't worked so far. Looking around on the internet regarding that error. Uh, 8000004. So there's an 8 with 7 zeros and a 4 at the end. The only thing that came up was NetSurf. It was more to do with running it in UAE, but did mention something about an FPU. That seems to be in some situations it needs an FPU and with NetSurf and other situations it doesn't. I'm not entirely sure. It was translated from another language into English and yeah, from Finnish. So it could have been something lost in the mistranslation, but I can disable the FPU and then see if NetSurf will run. It'd be interesting to know. So I'm gonna click reboot and it's gonna it's gonna die. I'm not gonna be able to do anything. So let's turn that off. <sighs> I'll unplug the clip box and we shall modify the now oh, I shall just disconnect. I'm gonna get underneath this thing. So let's unplug everything. <coughs> On the unit and that. So I can tip it up this way a bit to get into this trap door underneath. And I'll set the jumper for the FPU on here into the off position. So I'll just unplug it from the board. 
move it one slot across into the off position. Hopefully that does what it says and turns off the 6.2 FPU that I've put in there without needing to remove it because I don't particularly want to remove it. Uh, let's try to put this thing all back together again without breaking those wires there preferably Right. Okay. And then we'll get this into place. Let's lose the dressing gown. Yes, got it. Okay. Let's get the uh, plip box power back in. And then turn on the Amiga. We'll try net surf again. If it doesn't work. Well, it doesn't work. I want to eventually uh, upgrade the kickstart and workbench anyway, so it's all going to be reinstalled again at some point soon. See if I'll upgrade it to uh, version 3.2.1. But for now, it will be what it is. So let's go all files. Radio. We'll may return to NetSurf another day after maybe some later upgrades. But for now, let's try a different web browser. So we'll just go down to here. No, we don't want that. So we'll go over to our FTP again because we have some more on the FTP server that we can choose from. Let's just see if our network is working. No, it does not seem to be working. So. I'll abort that and we'll restart the computer. Plug the pillbox back in. Let me get back on and we'll download a version of AWeb. I don't think there's been any updates on AWeb since oh, near the end of the 2000s. But we'll try one of those. Here, let's go there. Connect. Connect. There we go. Now, if we go to the downloads on the FTP server, I have a folder on there called a web. A web. There it is. We'll make a choice. There is a light and there is a full. Now that or that. 3.4 or 3.58. Mm, let's try the 3.58. It's a 3.58 apparently so volume uh, work downloads yeah just pop it in there that, that'll be fine in the downloads and get okay so exit that for now so we've got a few versions here we can test. There's one that specifically says 020. Well, that one says 020. I might just download both those anyway, just to be sure there, to save on a little of going back and forth. And we'll exit that. And that. And that, and that. 
and go into here, downloads, they should be in here, your files, and just to clean that up a bit, right there's our Aweb things there, I'm going to create a new folder in here to move those Aweb files to. Into the work drive, into the downloads folder. Oh, yeah, my A. It doesn't always work, it seems to work most of the time. And then we'll go into the A Lab browser. Before we get too far, let's go into a temp folder here. I'm going to delete these for now. You can always extract them later on. It's going to save some space on the drive. And they'll extract those other files into here. Do, 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 do. Same with this one. I can, it's already installed somewhere else, so I don't need it there. And I have the original archive, so I can just get rid of that. Anyway, let's make a folder in here called look, a web. Oh, I missed the A again. Ah, oh, I want to call it a web, not web. Okay, a web, a web, a web. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, come here. L H A X. What do I want to do first? Let's do the. Well, we'll just do the more recent beta release. That's fine. Which is the 3.5.08. I did try to download 09, but the link was broken apparently, so 08 it was the 6 uh, 6 8 k underscore 200604.lhpa into Work. Ah. <clears throat> um. Okay. Um. Okay. If you have any typos there, I do. There's going to be a four. Yeah, I might have even pressed the four, and it didn't turn out. Okay, let's try it. So this is like a particular beta release. Let's actually, yeah. Okay, so that's done. Well, to some degree. We're going to see if it will run. It should now be in there. And we'll, I wonder if there's any other files in there. No? Is that a drawer in itself? Oh yeah. Well they're interesting looking uh, icons. 
We have an install option. Oh, let's try it. Probably going to ask me where I want to put it. Do -do 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 -do. Light, fast, multi-threaded, world wide web browser for the Amiga OS and Morph OS. Runs on a variety of TCP stacks including Genesis, Miami, Roadshow. Well, I hope you run on a Amy TCP because that's what we've got. Select the directory where you want it installed. I would like you to be installed in my applications folder over here. So let's create a folder there. New drawer. Aweb. Yeah, install in there. Oh, I was going to put a folder in there anyway. So what if we go a directory Aweb APL will be created there. Okay, we won't create well, we might delete that one afterwards. We'll just have this Aweb APL. Aweb underscore APL directory, which it'll plonk in there, which I'll be happy with. Do you wish to install Aweb alongside the standard program? Uh, nah. I think it's because it's possibly because it's like a, a beta release that has the developer stuff there. I mean, the, the full official release probably may have it. I don't know. Oh no, the one language you'll do. You do that. Yep, it's got more. You have to read me. I should remember to enable my uh, the floating point unit actually, because I did disable that earlier, and I would like it enabled. Do 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 do. No, that's typical README. That's fine. Ah, I want to close that. No. Please check the included in this archive for setting up internal image decoders. Oh, let, let's just go run the web browser. Close all this stuff. I'm just going to close it all. I think I was in the folder, but I'm just going to close everything. And applications. So it's created the web browser there. This one should be empty. So I'm going to delete that one. And go into here. And I guess that's all we do. Well, that's achieved a bit more than uh, NetSurf did by actually letting us browse a locally a HTML file that's on the local system. So let's see if we can go to google.com. Cookie back over secure get the go accept. Yeah. I hope there's a way to be that we can automatically accept all these cookies. 
because that would get extremely fucking irritating. Oh no! Same error. I've encountered the same problem. What does the reboot do here? Is it going to reboot or hang? Hmm. Okay. Well, I'll re-enable this the floating point here. We got a little further. We're still not quite there. Yeah, it's, it certainly turned out more challenging than I uh, originally anticipated. Ah, got it, okay. Now, let's... Uh, yes, let's... Let's what, you may ask? That'd be a fair question. Plug in the flip box. That's what we shall do. Okay. And then we'll turn this back on. I'm going to try the, the web browser again. Because that was a little uh, disappointing. It, it got, we got further. I actually got excited thinking, huh? Use this. No, I think we might have just have to remove it. That supposedly goes home. Can it do HTTPS? <gasps> you know what I think? What if we try a website that's not HTTPS? I'm wondering if it's the SSL stuff. That... Let's try this the HTTP site. I've got one open on another. Amy. Dash. Soft. Dot. Blog. Spot. Now I have Amy SSL installed, so let's go use Unsecure. Right, so we've actually made it to a web page. Interestingly enough, but what happens if we go to a HTTPS page? I think that's when we lock when it locks up. You, for example. Yeah, this is about when it locked up last time. Oh no! Interesting. Now it's not doing the same error. Hmm. I did enable the FPU though, so maybe that's all it needed. Well, it looks like we've actually we actually have some success here now. So let's go high there. 
and see if we can actually do a Google search. Okay, Amy Webb for the win. Yep. No, oh, sorry, Amy Webb? No, A Webb. A Webb for the win. A Webb for the. Yep, you've done it. And I should be able to click on something. Let's go. Let's learn how to use the term hi there. See how long that takes to load. Waiting for a response. Doesn't seem to be responding. Do we have right click options? We don't have different browse uh, tabs or anything. Do we? Open, you know, I've got a new window. Okay, we can have multiple windows. Now, for some reason, it's not following through to that page. Let's try this page. Images works. All the images look the same. Might be still downloading. Could be just something that fills in blanks while it's still downloading. Yes, yes, okay. Oh, we got the image search working. There is a palette, obviously, but that is indeed functional. Okay, it takes over the whole screen, so I can't. What if I click that? Okay, so you can shove it behind and play around with the other windows, and you can come back to it. it takes over. Uh, I come back to the front. Right. Let's click there and see if it goes there. Wow. Not a lot happening there. Might be some options in here we could uh adjust to speed things up like reduce what is being downloaded etc anything there anyway. What if I click on there and then go new window? How do I switch windows? I'm 
Is that there? No. HTTPS. Because when I went to try to go directly to Google previously, it actually crashed. So I just want to double check. It's not going to do that. Yeah. No. It seems to be fine. That's looking pretty good but I couldn't get to any other pages it doesn't really get to do a search I mean I would expect it to be a little slow obviously Never. I don't know if it's doing anything at all at the moment. A refresh option. Yeah. Seems to be. Studio album by the Beatles. I click on that I want to go to that page go to the page the Beatles help well, I don't want to try YouTube because that, that will just not work Definitely don't want to go to YouTube. Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Right, okay. Ah, oh, fuck off. We need to know how to turn that off. Before we do, I just want to go to Wikipedia. Take me to Wikipedia, please. Set. Go to Wikipedia, please. Okay, we can't seem to get to any other pages for some reason. Network settings?
take that off. Always. Right, so we turn off those other annoying things. Use email address as FTP and on password. No, I don't need that. Let's use. Hey, I just told you not to do that. We did that anyway. Making connection to Wikipedia. I was trying to connect to Wikipedia. Not completely ignoring the task. Now, how long it's going to take to get there? Wikimedia. Hmm. Well, it's doing it. I'm still scrolling up and down here. Oh, that's painfully slow. Oh no, it did. Well, it couldn't get there, but I tried. Let's try it again. Let's see if I can at least get to the main page. Nope. hit some sort of limitation here I think where's my settings right okay network settings use cookies always I want, okay, let's save it. So we can't get to Wikipedia for some reason. What about... What about... Ah, oh, missing an S. No, it's a Z actually, a Z on that page. Let's see if we'll go there. Yeah, we'll go there. That's a website I'd set up. Yep. So we've achieved some sort of web browsing. From there, you probably experiment with other web browsers, etc. But that is functional. There's nothing that's not functional about that. Like you just got to find a good browser that's going to do the job. And there are paid versions. Uh, if I upgrade the OS, there might be a better option there too. It's just a matter of looking into it. But the exercise was just uh, at this stage get the networking going and see if we can get on the network and the internet. That has been achieved. So I'm happy with that for now. And I can spend some time fiddling around and seeing what else I can uh, achieve. Maybe some better web browsing, etc. Within the limitations of a computer that was first released in 1992. Thanks for joining me. Till next time. Bye.